This should go without saying, but this is a very dangerous part of this job. So I'm an electrician for 32 years, and I know my subscribers know that already. But when you're cutting out these services, if you don't know what you're doing, then you better call a professional. But this is just like disconnecting 240 volts inside your house, except you're up on a ladder. So just be safe. All I'm doing is cutting them out, and I'm putting some vinyl tape around the live ends until I'm ready to cut in at the end of the day. If you're not, you don't feel comfortable doing this, call a professional. All right, so being that this side is in the sun right now, I'm gonna get the hell out of the sun and go work downstairs. I know from being here yesterday hey, that by 11 o'clock, I'll be in the shade over there since it was shady 11 a.m. yesterday morning. So I'm down in the basement now. I'm gonna remove the panel first and then we're going to uh, do the outside later on in the day. I didn't realize it was gonna be so late in the day, but the first thing I did was I measured the voltage on the solar panel circuit breaker here that actually back feeds onto the utility and there was absolutely zero voltage there. So I'm not sure what the problem is. Um, I was expecting to find something because I hadn't done, I hadn't touched any of the uh, solar equipment. I did um, before I got into the panel here, but uh, after I measured zero voltage on that circuit breaker. So I don't know if there's something wrong with the inverter or the disconnect or some kind of uh, conductor is broken up on the roof where the uh, solar panels are. Uh, but there was no, there was no, there was no power coming from the solar panels anyway. So once I take out all those circuit breakers, uh, I then start removing all my grounds and neutrals. And of course I identify all of my double pole breakers. Uh, this was already done when this panel was upgraded. I think it said 1999. So there's also uh, the two ground rods are also driven. I found one of them. I couldn't find the other. So I left the one in and added another one to complete the system. But being that these uh, conductors were identified for 240 volts made things easier for me and sped things up considerably. So getting this panel out of here is kind of a pain in the neck. It's a tight spot. Uh, it's a nice clean basement. I got drop cloths down everywhere and you just want to be clean and as efficient as possible when doing this work. Fortunately, there's nobody home. Uh, so it didn't matter what time I got done. Usually I tell people that the power will be back on by no later than 5 p.m. I'm glad that didn't happen here because I didn't turn the power back on until about quarter to nine. And uh, it was a long, long, long day. I'm not sure why this one takes, took me a lot longer than some other panels, but <clears throat> I imagine when there's 30 existing circuits, that had a lot to do with it. Because usually I'll get done wiring the panel by 3 o'clock in the afternoon or so, but I wasn't done with this one until about 6. And I figured that's the difference right there between getting the power back on at 5 p.m. and getting the power back on by 8.45. So because that foundation wall bumps out about six inches, I have to account for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these this two by six up into 12 pieces, two feet long, and then I'm going to add them onto each other to make up that difference before mounting the panel. I actually like a good challenge, um, and this one was definitely challenging, but uh, the existing wood that was attached to the cinder block was solid as could be. I tried ripping that off, and if I can't rip it off, I don't think it's going to be ripped off. So I just added to it <clears throat> by adding these um, two-by blocks. There's six of them, like I said, 24 inches long. And then I um, mount in a quarter-inch plywood uh, to it. So a very sturdy installation here for sure. Um, the reason why this, another reason why this, this panel became difficult, you can see above where the wires come from, there's not much room for, for movement to get them into the panel. So I literally take each one of those circuits and I put them into the panel and, um, push the panel up before pulling the conductors back through and attaching the, uh, lock nuts to them. So it took a little while, but it was worth it. And, uh, I like being challenged. Like I said, uh, when it's done, it comes out nice. I'm very proud of that work. Uh, more so than if it was something simple.
All right, the trick here is there is no trick. I got a whole bunch of different circuits here, BX cables, Romex cables, and there's a lot of them. And I got to get the service entrance cable from the outside into the top of this panel. And as you can see with the ceiling right there, there's not a lot of room to work. So this is what you call a major pain in the ass to get all this work done, to plan it out accordingly and get it done and have it look neat. It takes a lot of time and a lot of practice. And uh, I'm glad I got this done because it was a pain in the ass for sure. So, like I said earlier, getting all these cables into this panel is a pain in the ass because there's not a lot of working room above where the cables enter the main breaker panel, okay, the enclosure. So what I'm doing is I'm stripping back my wires and I'm prepping them with connectors into the top of the box. And I'm going to get all my wires inside the enclosure before I attach it to the plywood backing board there. And the reason why I do this <clears throat> is because there's no room up above to get those cables into the box if I don't do it here. So that extra foot of room you see there between the top of the box and the ceiling is the only space I have to work. So I prep all my cables, I get them into the knockouts, I put the lockouts, put the lock nuts in, and then I very delicately push it all up as one big assembly, which you'll see later. And if I haven't said it yet, I'll say it again. This job was a pain in the ass and uh, took a lot of time I'm glad it's over with but it was a lot of work for sure I keep saying that because that's I gotta stress that it was a major pain in the neck but got it done anyhow
So it was getting late here, and I unfortunately did not record uh, tying the service back in up at the service head from the utility. Uh, but once I do that, the first thing I do is I check the line side for proper voltage, and that's 240 volts from leg to leg and 120 volts from ground, from one leg to, the, uh, to ground and the other leg to ground. That's how you know you have your proper voltage. And then before you put the meter in, you also want to check for any shorts on the load side go between your hot and your ground and your hot and your hot and if the main breaker in the panel is off you should read no um, continuity at all there should be no uh, no path there for any problems if there is then uh, you could start arc welding very soon so you check that and then once you put the meter in you check for proper voltage on the load side and then on the back here I'm just putting the date and uh, the temperature and whether or not it was sunny or cloudy today for the next guy to read that and make make of it what he will or she will um so now that the meter's in i put the cover back on uh now i'm going to go back downstairs and turn on all the circuit breakers including the main and the individual circuit breakers and uh the job will be done before i turn that main breaker on though i just check for proper voltage again here to make sure everything's good to go all righty so now everything's back on. This is a quick look at the panel. Uh, I know some people frown upon the wire nuts, but there's nothing in the code that <clears throat> addresses wire nuts inside a panel. That's where you're supposed to do it. You might not like the way it looks or whatever, uh, but when you got an old house like this and old circuits, some circuits just don't reach to the breakers or to the bus bars. So you got to extend them. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, if you haven't already subscribed, please do that. Hit that like button if you could. That would def that's definitely a big help. And uh, the notifications bell if you really, really enjoy this content. Thanks, guys. And uh, signing off from the voiceover. Hey, guys. If you're still here watching this video at the end, I thank you very much. Please hit that like button and the subscribe button and notifications bell. If you enjoy this video, please let me know about it in the comments. If you have any questions of what I did, uh, whether or not you think something meets the code or surpasses the code requirement, you let me know. We did the grounding update here. We did the two ground rods here. We identified all the circuits inside the panel. Well, the majority of the circuits in the panel. <clears throat> we built this panel out from where it was before on this ledge. The bottom of the panel used to be on this ledge right here, but now, because this panel is significantly taller, or longer I should say, we had to build it out. As you can see, that's solid as could be right there. It's not going anywhere. So please, if you have any questions at all, please leave them down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Alright guys, so this is the outside here where the meter is. It's right next to some solar equipment. It looks like there's a solar load panel here. I'm not exactly sure, but there's some solar equipment up on the roof. I didn't get any readings of it on the, on the breaker downside and downstairs in the main breaker panel. So I'm not sure why they're not working, but I put everything back the way I found it. Uh, so anyway, so this is the duct seal that we use on top of the service entrance cable. Very popular here in the Northeast. I know we don't do this all over the country. Here in New Jersey, this is how it's done with service entrance cable. We also have service entrance cable on the bottom, because that's also allowed, unless it's in an area where it's subject to physical damage. The back of somebody's yard here, or actually on the side of the yard, with a, with a fence without a gate over here, I highly doubt any vehicular traffic is gonna hit this. And I'm not worried about the landscapers with their weed whacking, because I think the 
insulation on here, the, the sheathing on this cable is stronger than a weed whacker. So I saw that in somebody's comments. I'm trying to address that now. The other comment I saw was about wire nuts inside of a panel. Um, somebody was saying that was against the code. I don't know who said that. That's the most ridiculous thing I ever, hold, ever heard. That panel is a wiring enclosure, which is where you're supposed to make the splices. Now sometimes it doesn't look neat. I hear you. But if I didn't splice it inside the panel, if the conductor wasn't long enough, I would have to put it into a junction box, which is what I would do. If the wires are long enough to get inside the enclosure, I'll do all my splices in there all day long because it's easier and faster. And of course, it doesn't violate any section of the National Budget Code. You want to go to 110-TAC-12, it talks about workmanship. That's fine. I'll have that argument with you. I think it's fine. I've, seen, I've done it like this forever. Never failed an inspection for it. Anyway. Going on a tangent, I just appreciate you guys watching the video. Just wanted, to see, wanted you to see the final project. Uh, we did the whole service yesterday during the day where I cut it out, turned it back on by the end of the day. I got done at about 8.30 last night. So it was a long day by myself. It's like one of the hottest days of the year. It's over 90 degrees today and it was hot, hotter than that yesterday. Fortunately, on this side of the house, I'm in the shade most of the day because of a giant tree right behind that camera. Otherwise, I'd be standing in the sun and I don't think I would do this job. I'd have to wait until the fall to do that because it just doesn't make any sense to bake in the sun. Just, I'm exhausted. This took a lot longer than it normally does. Um, I was here on Wednesday doing the grounding system. I was here on Thursday upgrading the actual service. And then on Friday, I came back to fix some of this solar wiring that wasn't long enough to get into the panel. So I had to pull some new feeds through uh, to connect it. And I did that today, and I also labeled the panel today, which also takes some amount of time. I work by myself, so that takes a lot of time sometimes. Fortunately, this is a good friend of the family, my friend Lisa's house, and uh, there's nobody home here today, so I was able to just come in, do what I had to do, without affecting anybody on their computer or their internet service or anything like that. So, <clears throat> job is done now. I'm gonna send her a final invoice, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching, take care.